All right, back with these dipole things. The statement reads, a circular loop of wire with radius R lies in the XY plane centered at the origin and carries a current I running counterclockwise as viewed from the positive Z axis. What is the magnetic dipole moment? B, what is the approximate magnetic field at points far from the origin? C, show that for points on the Z axis, your answer is consistent with the exact field when Z is much, much greater than R. Quick look at how we draw this up. This was a diagram from an example in the book where we have the circular loop and current running counterclockwise. And uh, we find some field and point of space, which we'll compare to with this example. All right. So what we need to know is how they define the magnetic dipole moment, M, is equal to I uh, integral over the surface area, which is equal to IA, where A is defined as the uh, vector area. So that could switch based on geometry. Be mindful of that. Um and the multipole expansion approximation is uh, the magnetic field of a dipole is equal to mu naught over 4 pi m over r cubed uh, times 2 cosine theta r hat plus sine theta theta hat. All right, let's jump in. A, the magnetic dipole moment is m, and we show that we can find this via the integration of a circle which is 0 to 2 pi, 0 to r, r to r to theta, in the z hat direction, that's how we're oriented, uh, which we just know just to be the area of a circle, so i times pi r squared in the z hat direction. And part b, the approximate magnetic field of a dipole is given as the equation on our note page, so whenever we plug in uh, m, we see that we have uh, b dipole is approximately mu naught, over 4 pi times i pi r squared over little r cubed. The pi's cancel, and we're left with, uh, and then the uh, brackets stay the same. So this is our approximate form. Again, same thing, just without the pi's. Uh, now moving on to C, we have to be situationally aware here. On the z-axis, on the positive z-axis anyways, uh, for z greater than zero, theta is equal to zero, r is equal to z, and r hat is equal to z hat, positive, of course. So if we plug these in, right, theta equals 0 uh, yields cosine going to 1 and sine going to 0. Uh, so we also substitute in uh, z hat for r hat. Uh, but notice that the, the coefficient of 2 on the cosine cancels with the 1 over 4 in the denominator uh on the coefficient outside of the bracket. So in general, we're left with mu naught i r squared divided by two z cubed in the z hat direction. That looks pretty familiar. Uh, conversely, uh, for z less than zero, we have theta equal to pi and r hat equal to negative z hat. Um, so we also know that z will be negative in this region, clearly, because z is less than zero. So we just put a magnitude sign uh, on the z cubed. And again, we get similar cancellations. Um, we note that it's the same thing given that z is equal or uh, that we put the magnitude of z there um, because pi or uh, cosine at pi is negative one, but also the unit vector is negative, so they cancel. So we get the same thing. Um, again, just make sure you have a magnitude there for the variable. Uh, also note that that makes sense because when we uh, translate that to spherical, we can't have a negative radius that doesn't exist. Um, so magnitude there makes plenty of sense. Uh, so for this, uh, this is exactly what the field reduces to in a limit where z is much, much greater than the radius of the circle. Uh, when z is much, much bigger than, that denominator uh, is uh, transferred or goes to z squared instead of r squared plus z squared it just goes to z squared uh since that's the dominant term and we see that the square cancels with the one half leaving us again with mu naught i over two um times r squared over magnitude z cubed pretty straightforward but again be careful with the geometry we'll see you for the next one